osmotic and non-osmotic diuresis. So what's polyuria? Polyuria is when urine output is more than 3 liters a day. And what's the difference between osmotic and non-osmotic diuresis? In osmotic diuresis, the osmolality of urine is more than 300 milliosmoles a liter and that in non-osmotic it's less than 250 milliosmoles per liter. So what's osmotic diuresis? The total solute excretion in a day should be 600 milliosmoles per liter. If the solute excretion is more than 750 milliosmoles a day, then it defines osmotic diuresis and the urine osmolality is more than 300 milliosmoles a liter and is confirmed by measuring urine, glucose and urea. So how does it occur? The non-reabsorbable organic solutes in the tubular lumen impair the osmotic reabsorption of water and sodium causing osmotic diuresis. So there is increased sodium and water loss. The water loss is more than the sodium loss. So what are the causes of osmotic diuresis? Number one, diuretics. Diuretics act on different parts of the nephron to cause osmotic diuresis. The loop diuretics interfere with the countercurrent mechanism and produce isosmotic solute diuresis. Manitol is an osmotic diuresis because renal tubule is impermeable to manitol. The non reabsorbable solute glucose in uncontrolled diabetes glycosuria is the most common cause of osmotic diuresis. Urea causes osmotic diuresis and it occurs in patients receiving high protein alimentation. The next cause is renal tubular interstitial disorders. They also cause osmotic diuresis. The, and the diuretic or the resolving phase of acute tubular necrosis and it can also occur after the relief of bilateral urinary tract obstruction. Aldosterone deficiency causes sodium loss in the absence of renal disease and amongst the food products protein meal causes osmotic diuresis so it needs more water drinking to maintain the hydration. The Barter syndrome also causes osmotic diuresis. There is impaired sodium reabsorption in thick ascending limb and distal tubule. As a consequence activation of aldosterone system causes increased sodium reabsorption in the collecting tubule and increased secretion of potassium and hydrogen ion causing hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis. The non-osmotic urinary loss. Non-osmotic urinary loss. The urine osmolality is less than 250 milliosmol the little and occurs in primary polydipsia or diabetes insipidus. So what's the difference? In primary polydipsia there is low serum sodium whereas in diabetes insipidus there is increased serum sodium. The most common cause of non-osmotic polyuria is diabetes insipidus both central and nephrogenic diabetes. And the most common cause of diabetes insipidus is destruction of posterior pituitary due to trauma, tumor, infection or neurosurgery but it may also be idiopathic or hereditary. So what are the features of the diabetes insipidus? Increased urination, hypovolemia, hypernatremia and a dilute urine due to decreased specificity and osmolality with a less than 250 milliosmoles a liter. So what are the drugs that cause diabetes insipidus? They are the monixis. M-E-D-A-L, M for methoxyfluorine, E for ethanol, D for d meclocycline A for amphotericin B and L for lithium. So the lithium is important because it is used for long periods in psychiatric patients suffering from bipolar disorders and its use may cause diabetes insipidus. So what's the difference between dehydration and diabetes insipidus? In both these conditions, serum sodium is high, whereas urine osmolality is high in dehydration and reduced in diabetes insipidus.